If you could have only one knife in your collection, what would it be? I get asked a ton of questions about gear that I would carry. What's my favorite wallet? What's my favorite bag or flashlight, whatever. But when I ask for Q and A questions or even just in the comments of the videos or on Instagram, what knife I would have if I could only have one is easily the most asked question, period by a long shot. To be completely honest, it's not a very difficult question to answer. I know what I would carry or have in my collection if I can only have one, but I wanna answer that for you guys. So if you could only have one knife, what would it be? That's what I'm gonna answer today in this video. Uh, also, I'm Taylor Martin, this is the best MEDC, and let's do the damn thing. So to be fair and to be completely clear up front, I'm not answering with just one knife. I will tell you at the end what my pick would be, but I wanted to hit a few different budgets. Some people don't want to spend $200 on a knife and would rather allocate that money to something else such as investments or savings or you know something probably a little more uh, wise or <laughs> financially sound. But if you do have the means to spend that kind of money on a knife, then I also wanna answer the question for you. So what I've done is select four different price tiers that I think really encapsulate the knife market. Obviously, there are far more expensive knives and some that are far more affordable, but I, those I think are the sweet spot where I think you should be spending your money if you're looking at a knife that is worth your money. So I've chosen around $50, around 100, 200, and 400. So that $200 mark is more like 175 to 250. 100 is like, 80 to 120, you know, it's a range. So I've picked a few ranges that I think you should be spending in if you're looking for a really nice knife. And I've picked my favorite pick within each range with a few alternatives if that's maybe not your style or maybe it's not available because that's that's the knife market. So let's get started. First up in the $50 realm, uh, this one is probably no surprise to anyone. It's the most recommended, it is the most sought after, it's just a really, really solid option. And that's the Civivi Elementum. You guys know this, it's one of my favorite knives. Honestly, I carry this one, I carry the other one. I really love the Civivi Elementum. I think Civivi and Wee Knife, they knocked it out of the park with this thing and they just continue to do so because they keep rolling out new models and new versions and they're all just really, really great and they all sell out so fast. They're actually in stock as of right now on Blade HQ. So if you're interested in this one, finally I can say that you can go buy it right now if you do want one. Uh, maybe not the configuration you want, but there are several in stock, several different configurations in stock on Blade HQ. So with the $50 that you spend on this knife, you're getting a lot of really great things. You're getting a flipper on ball bearings with a liner lock, really, really great detent. I've had five or six different Elementums now, and every single one has been spot on. I've not had a flaw in any of them. And I have heard a few defectors lately who say the, the Elementum is not what it's all cracked up to be. I finally got my hands on one and it wasn't for me. That's fine. I mean, it doesn't have to be for you, but for a lot of people, clearly this knife is a really, really good one. The size for some may feel a little small, but I've got fairly meaty paws and it fits really well in the hand. It's a full four finger grip, perfect jimping. I love the ergos on it. It's got a really nice deep carry clip. Honestly, very, very, very few complaints about the Elementum. And if this isn't your cup of tea, the other recommendations, there's a ton of options from Civivi and I don't really think you can go wrong. There's the Backlash, the Praxis, there's a ton of Civivis. There's also a Honey Badger, which is similarly specced, but even a little cheaper, like $35. See, there's so many companies coming out swinging at this like $50 price mark. You have Civivi, Rake, uh, CJRB, Tangram from Kaiser, there's so many brands. And of course, there's the staple, which is the Spyderco Tenacious. So really around this price range, there are a million different options. Honestly, it's so hard to pick just one. But if I did have to pick just one, without a doubt, it would be the Elementum. So when you step up from that $50 range, which is just a broad category of a lot of great selections, you step up to $100 and your, your options really narrow in on just a few models. There are tons of hidden gems in that range. Something that I would consider a hidden gem is just about anything from Ferrum Forge. They have a lot of options that are made by We Knife that are right around $100, like the Ferrum Forge Falcon, 100 bucks, killer, killer knife. There's also the Gent. They're all so good, but at $100 or around $100, I have one that I would absolutely pick 
hand over fist every time. And that is the Para 3 Lightweight. Now this one in particular is not exactly your $100 version. This was a sprint run from DLT Trading. So this one has an M390 blade. Uh, so not exactly the $100 one. I think this one was like 150. So while this version is the M390 version, the one that's around $100 is gonna be CTS BD1 in steel, which is a little milder steel. It's not quite as hard, but it is easier to sharpen. Say what you will about blade steels. I'm not a blade steel snob. I'm happy with everything from from D2 up to M390 or RWL34. I'm happy with just about anything. As long as I can put an edge on it, I'm happy with it. So uh, I'm not the best person to ask when it comes to the knife seals, but I, I have no experience with BD1N at all. Uh, but I've heard pretty good things about it. And the, the Pair 3 Lightweight gets a ton of love from pretty much everybody. But what you get with this knife is quite a bit for $100. You get your spider hole, the beautiful ergonomics of the Pair 3. It is very, very lightweight, around 2.5 ounces. I believe you have a compression lock. This one I have tightened a little too much. Um, and it originally does not come with a milled titanium clip. Obviously it has a deep carry wire clip, but it's a really great knife for around a hundred bucks. And I think it's a really, really great buy. Let's just say you're not a huge fan of Spyderco or that's not your bag, or you want a different blade steel, something a little more high end for the money. You're gonna look at probably the fan favorite, the Bug Out. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence about the Bug Out still. I still recommend it because I think it's a good knife. It's just not my favorite anymore. The other option is the Wee Banter. And uh, this one has gotten a lot of praise lately. It's kind of an understated, very simple, straightforward knife. It's just a cutting tool. It's not anything fancy. And that's exactly what Ben Peterson, the designer, wanted. Uh, obviously, you guys probably know Ben Peterson, formerly of Blade HQ, or what is up, guys? Uh, this knife is just a very, very basic, straightforward tool, nothing fancy, and that's exactly what Ben wanted. It's a lot of bang for buck, right around the $100 mark, just a really solid knife, tuned perfectly. There's nothing to complain about with this knife, other than the fact that if you like flashy, it's not that. Personally, I think it'd be a little better with some OD micarta, but I mean, that's just me. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot, this one I guess technically would be closer to the $100 mark because this is the S35V inversion of the Civivi Elementum. These were out of stock, so I didn't really want to add it to the list, but apparently, according to Blade HQ, they are coming back in stock with a few different versions, but yeah, Elementum in S35 VN. Uh, I've been carrying this one. This has been my carry off and on for the last two weeks. And uh, frankly, this is one of my favorite knives to carry right now. So when you move up from the $100 range to the $200 range, there's actually a big gap. For whatever reason, $200 is like a dead zone for knives. I would put that $100 range cut off at like 120 and the $200 range is massive because I would start it at like 150, 160 and it goes up to around 300, like 290 would be like the upper end of that range. But there's a giant gap between like 180 and 220. There's just not much there. So this range is really like 150 to 180 and then 220 to 290. So it's a broad range. And on the upper end of that, there are so many options and you're starting to get into like the small production runs of Pena knives, Chavez knives, uh, something obscene company. What you're getting in this range is smaller knife makers who make their own knives, custom knives. They've gone to OEMs like Rayot and Wee Knife and had small production runs of their knives so that people can afford them or they are more affordable and more widely available than their customs. And there are so many great options. I've had a bunch of knives from this price range, like 250 to 290, a little over 300 sometimes, just amazing stuff. I love so many knives. And I think this is kind of like the sweet spot for the knife collector, but for a person who wants a one and done knife, like one knife for everything, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Like if you like something in that range, go for it because I don't think you can really go wrong, especially if you're talking Raya or Wii. But once you're looking in this broad range from like 150 to 300, uh, I would actually recommend staying on the lower end of it with something that maybe you're gonna disagree with me, but I think this is probably the best pick in this range. And it's none other than the Paramilitary 2. I mean, it's a staple in the community. It's just a really solid knife. And there's a reason that it's owned by so many people. Another reason that I recommend this so much is because there are so many different versions. You can really just kind of get what you want with it. And if you buy just a basic one, you can, 
upgrade it and change it and just keep it fresh all the time. You have titanium scales, micarta scales, copper scales. You've got different blade steels to choose from. These are both S30V, but this one is Rex 45. You have different pocket clip options. We have a milled clip, a titanium deep carry clip, or the stock clip. So many options for making the paramilitary two your own. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck for your money too. You're getting really great quality control. You have amazing ergonomics. I think this is probably one of the most or best ergonomic knives out there. It's just, just kind of locks into your hand. I love the way it feels. Action on every single one I've had is great. I think it's just a really rock solid option that you can't go wrong with. Obviously, if the paramilitary two is a little too big for you, then go for the para three. Same knife, just a little bit smaller, scaled back. So here for scale, here's the Para 3 Lightweight and a Paramilitary 2. So very similar in shape and design and ergos, but obviously Para 3 is scaled down just a little bit. But again, if Spider Crow's not your bag, there's a ton of options, no shortage of options in this price range. Once again, I'm gonna recommend not going with a production run, like a small production from a, a small maker, only in, in this scope of having a single knife. And the reason for that is, is warranty. Um, a lot of these from smaller makers, the warranty is gonna be kind of questionable. Uh, Berg Blades, love his designs. One of my favorite knives in my collection is from Berg Blades. But if you take the knife apart, the warranty's void. So it's a very different warranty situation than something that you get from Spyderco or Benchmade. So that's something to take into consideration, especially if there's only one knife in your collection. But if you are looking for something other than Spyderco, uh, Benchmade is the obvious secondary choice. Uh, 940 is a really, really great option. People love that knife. For me, I was so-so on it, but the, the Benchmade knife that I would recommend right around $200 mark is the Mini Crooked River. It's the best Benchmade knife I had. I don't have it anymore, but it's a really, really solid knife. So when you graduate from that $200 range, which goes all the way up to just under $300, you're looking at a range that's like 300 up to five, six, seven hundred dollars, even a thousand, I would consider in this range. It's just one of those that it's very broad. And there aren't nearly as many options. Things really tend to narrow out here. And you're looking at more custom stuff or high-end production knives that are made in the US or something like uh, a Shirogorov, which is Russian made. And again, it comes down to warranty. With a Shirogorov, uh, the warranty is kind of great. But if you're looking in that $400 range, there are two that I'm gonna recommend, and that is the Sabenza and a Hinderer XM18. Really any Chris Reeve or Hinderer knife, the quality at this level is just immaculate. The quality control and everything is just spectacular, and your warranty is outstanding. Unless you're like me and you modify your Sabenza, don't do what I do, kids. The quality here is just kind of next level. I mean, from your, your two $300 knives, these, these Chris Reeve knives and Hinderer knives are just your next level. This one, for instance, you can take this pivot screw and totally loosen it. You can take one side of it out and there's still no blade play. The tolerances on these are just so tight that even with this pivot screw totally loosened and taken out, not the whole pivot screw, but just one side, there's still no blade play. It's, it's really, really spectacular. And you're getting a tool right here that is gonna last a lifetime or, or decades, honestly. You can use this thing every day and just beat the crap out of it. And it's still gonna work as long as you don't break it. And even then you're looking at something that you could reblade and not have to buy a totally new one. So it is an investment and it's something that uh, if, if I were to have just one knife in my collection, it would definitely be one of these four, which I have a three inch and a three and a half inch XM18, a small Sabenza 31 and a, a large Sabenza 21. Honestly, if I had to narrow my collection down to just one and I had to choose between these four, I'd be happy with any of them. But to answer the long standing question, if I had to get rid of every other knife in my collection and I could only keep just one, what would it be? It's actually really easy for me to answer and it would be the large Sabenza 21, the one that I modified. Uh, I just love this knife. It's really, really great. And uh, while I have been crushing really hard on smaller knives lately, which is why I got a small Sabenza 31, if I had just one, I would go with the larger size. I mean, you, you get a little more utility out of it. It's not that much bigger in the pocket. It's still definitely there. It's definitely bigger. Uh, but if I had just one in my collection, one knife, period, it would be the large Sabenza 21. So there you have it. I know that's a lot of information to take in. So to recap really quickly, at $50, in that $50 range, I would recommend the Civivi Lamentum, which you're gonna get in a D2 variant. At around $100, we're looking at a Para 3 Lightweight. At around $200, we are looking at a Paramilitary 2, maybe with some customizations. And then 
at the $400 range, we're looking at a Sabenza. And obviously I have mentioned a few alternatives in each, but if you think I'm wrong or I miss something very important at each price point, just let me know in the comments down below what you would recommend as the single knife at each of these price ranges, or just in general, what one knife you would get in your collection if you couldn't have any more than just one. That is going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future. And everything I mentioned in this video is linked down below. So if you want to support what I'm doing, hit those links. And if you do decide to purchase any one of those using those links, I get a little bit of a kickback. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash best MEDC or carry commission to buy gear and merch directly from me. Also be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us in most places at best MEDC. There's a Facebook group and a Discord server. They're both linked down below. I highly encourage you to join the community off YouTube. It's an amazing, amazing community. Both places are growing really fast. They're just great places to hang out with really great people and people who are far more knowledgeable than me on a lot of different things. So if you've got questions, that's a really good place to ask them. But with that said, and until next time, carry on.